And you're welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Till conversations bordering on the current economic situation of Nigeria. Uh, the situation, of course, is still biting down on everybody employed unemployed small business operators of course to say the least a very perplexing situation inflation continues to worsen the cost of living of the populace enrolled in the purchasing power of citizens uh, with no sucker in sight even though inflation is a concept that affects all of us most importantly high inflation is hostile to even the economy more lower income earners are likely to replace healthier food options with what is available, which could be toxic and detrimental to health. Because a uh, cost of living crisis affects more than just our bank accounts, it hurts and affects mental health as it increases worry and anxiety. Uh, we have a public uh, health expert to talk to us about this in person of Prince Badamosi. Good morning, sir. Thank you for Good joining morning. us. Thank you. All right. Uh, we had this conversation sometime last week. And, you know, you did mention how that not all food, uh, natural looking food out there is actually natural. Some of them are genetically um, curated. And, you know, kicking up from where we ended it last week, uh, I want to believe you have, you know, uh, plans for that. So please let, let us hear more about it. Yes, I was trying to talk about the available food on Nigerian shelves. And you know, at a time like this now, we say people just go for what they can afford easily. You, there's no time to select the best food that you want. You are driven between this is what I want to eat and this is what I can afford to eat. I was trying to say anytime you see any kind of fruits or food, mention maybe mango, maybe onions, whatever, whatever, they are of three types. You know, I mentioned local, the very best, but they are not enough in supply. They are mentioned hybrid, which is enough. But then I mentioned the third type, which is um, genetically modified organisms. And they are not good for consumption. I mentioned the reason. They possess a certain gene. That gene can be transferred to animal upon consumption. We, of course, we are one. Then that gene is resistant to antibiotics. So the world campaign against it, and uh, I'm afraid. Now going to market now, that's what we see. What do we have now to say, okay, this is what I want, this is what I don't want. So judging by the effect of this subsidy, now people now go to market and this is, this is beautiful. They look big, they look attractive. But yes, you can afford it. So if you see the one that is big and this a bit expensive, you want to say, ah, let me go for this one. So at the end of the day, now it brought that back on you, know, you now having a gene that is resistant to antibiotics. Which means it has a very high side effect. If it has an about, I mean, a, a, an infection that is the pathogens, I mean, the pathogen that disease causes organisms is bacteria. You need to administer antibiotics. And now, in administration of antibiotics, it will not have effect if somebody is resistant to that antibiotics. Mm. Hmm. All right. So, how how how? What's the options now? I, I mean. I, I know that growing up in food and nutrition class, they would say fruits and vegetables are the best things you can do for your body if you continue to eat them consistently. And of course, they would mention eat what is in season. So if it is mango that is in season, make sure you eat sufficient uh, of it. If it's uh, corn like we have right now, eat enough of it. Whatever is in season, garden eggs or uh, uh, cucumbers, whatever. Now you're mentioning that there are some of these cucumbers and garden eggs in the market, but they are not fit for consumption. So it, it also goes ahead to limit the um, what we have available for consumption. It, 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 and that is if you even have knowledge of what the difference is. You did mention how to notice the difference, but if I buy, uh, say, if I go to the market and I buy like three or four cucumbers, I ate two uh, last week and I still have two in my fridge and they are decomposing. I have eaten two already, so they are in my system. I am now knowing that these two are not good for consumption because instead of growing, instead of sprouting, it is decomposing. So how, how, how do people begin to like know what is what? Is it, is, it, is it something you can differentiate by just merely looking at it or are there things that, make, that separate uh, the good from the bad? Sporting difference is very scientific. It is not easy for an individual person, for the so-called expert, to identify it on the shelf, mm. especially driven between hybrid and GMOs. 
the genetically modified organisms and the hybrids, they look alike. The major difference is when they get to your house and the time come to sprout, it will not sprout one. Because this is the major difference. See, the major difference is that hybrid will reproduce, but the, the, the output of hybrid decreases as generation increases. You know what I mean? I mean, if you have, you plant now, for example, you plant maize, the first generation we call the first failure. If a generation gives you maybe 200,000 tons per hectare, then the next one will give you like maybe 150,000. It will be diminishing. The third one, 100,000. It's the output decreases as the generation increases. Mm. So that's why it's scientific. You cannot neutralize that at once. The number two reason, I mean, difference is that the hybrid and GMO look alike on the field. They will have seed, they will have, they will bear, you know, high yield. Then at the same time, they will have, um, what do you call it? They have flowers. But when, the, the, we don't have seed, mind you, when you plant the seed of a GMO, it will never, ever germinate. You see? But on the shelf, it is highly unfortunate that I'm sorry. You couldn't know it. That's why I say government policy is important. You know, they should not allow the sale of that one in the public. There are times like this now. Every you can add, you know, woman must survive. You see, people go all out, you know, to see whatever I see I eat. And I, I tell you, it's having an effect on our health. But that's the more reason why some people say those who live in the village, they live longer, those because they have access to only local seeds. But in the city here, yeah, you agree with me that you go to we have access. People even those who farm from those who are created of the country bring their produce to Lagos for sale. So we have access to so many different kind of products. All right. Now you talked about very important issues, and sometimes it's it's, it's scary because, like you talked about the genetically modified stuffs, they, they do not have uh, you, you can't plant them. They don't have seeds, right? You can plant them, but they won't germinate. They won't germinate. Yeah. So now, for the average man who wants to buy vegetables from the shelf. I'm telling you, that, that's the reality. You cannot be able to start saying you want to differentiate. Because the mindset is, I want to buy these things. Are they fresh? Yes. Can I have them? That's it. So when you bring these things home, perhaps you start consuming them and perhaps reserve the rest for future usage, it starts depreciating in terms of value. Now, coming to look at government policy, because that's where the issue starts from. Mm -hmm. What do you think could make up a policy, a policy document by a government to make sure that this ugly, you know, trend is stemmed in the tide? Yes, government is the business of, you know, when you look at the Nigerian constitution, the number one responsibility of federal government is to provide food, security of food and properties to the citizens. And to be fair, I mean, in fairness today, the Ministry of Agri, they have a department that supplies seeds. So seeds. it is their responsibility now yeah. to make it sure that we have quality seeds. Hybrid is good enough. Can give up it. That GMO, they should restrict it or even ban it. Where is the GMO coming from? That's the question. Is it smuggled into the country or how does it come in in the first place? It's not smuggled, but um, it comes through normal process. Which I process? I think the constitution just allows it. What did you call it? It's still allowed. It's legally imported. So you mean... It's even allow into the economy. even it's being brought into the into yeah, the country the through process. borders and they are aware yeah, of this. They are aware of it. So that means the the enforcement of the law starts with those who are also breaking the law. Definitely, 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 definitely. So wow. sorry, let me let me understand the situation. Okay. Knowing the effect of these GMOs, mm -hmm. uh, knowing knowing how that it makes you know human beings very uh, resistant to antibiotics. And knowing the role antibiotics play in, you know, healthcare mm -hmm. in, in individuals, mm. they know these things, and mm -hmm. then it is still being legally allowed mm. to be. I, I don't. <laughs> please make it make sense, Josh. <laughs> because we are we are on air. <coughs> so we are on course. air. Yeah. For you to say that yeah. even it is legally allowed to come into the country, understanding the hazard mm -hmm. it does to the human health. Mm -hmm. So we in public health sector campaigns against this. You get my point? We know it. But it's like I don't know, I cannot really say why it has not been fully stopped. 